All right, welcome to this video on discrete random variables, binomial distributions. Uh, let's see, I'm going to jump right into it. This is my third or fourth attempt. I've said something silly or goofed up somewhere in this thing. I've had to restart several times, so I don't care what happens in this. I don't care how silly it sounds. I'm moving forward. All right, how do I determine if it's a binomial setting? So I know it's, I'm, I'm dealing with some kind of discrete random variable, and in the particular case I'm going to talk about is um, rolling a die. All right, so roll, rolling a die uh, five times and I'm specifically looking to get uh, looking for a four on the die and what's the chance that it's actually going to happen I'll say two times all right so that's our situation so is this a binomial setting well the first thing of all um, is it a success or failure kind of situation. In other words, you can only have one of two outcomes. Either you get a four or you don't get a four. So it is um, because that's the situation I'm talking about. Are there n observations? And specifically I'm saying are there a fixed number of observations? Well, I'm going to roll it five times. So yes, it does. And are they all independent of each other? So in other words, each observation or trial, um, is it independent of the previous one? And yes, um, if you roll the die one time and then the next time you're looking, does it change the probability based on what you got on the previous one? No. Okay, they're all independent of each other. And are the probabilities the same and for each event? Okay, and the probabilities are the same. It's one sixth chance each time I roll it. This nomenclature right here, B parentheses N comma P, just means that it's a binomial distribution uh, with N observations where each has the probability uh, P for success. That's what the symbols mean. All right, so I know in my particular example, I would say, oh, this is B 5 comma 1 sixth. All right, which just means I'm going to do something five times and the chance for success is 1 sixth. All right, so let's look at um, three different formulas. The average, or what's commonly referred to as the expected value of this standard deviation, so mu of X, is uh, simply n times p. And so in my particular example, 5 times, uh, 1 6. So the uh, average that I would expect to get uh, by rolling a single die uh, uh, with a probability of 1 6, I would expect to find um, 5 6 is the average number of times that I would get a 4. That sounds kind of weird. Um, well, let, let me change. Let me change the situation. Let's say I did it six times. You know, how many times would you expect to get a four if you rolled it six times? Well, you would kind of think one time, wouldn't you? Because there's it was a one six chance. Well, if you do this formula, it comes out to the expected value of one. So it does make sense. So I'm just kind of kind of understanding that five six. All right, the standard deviation of that, uh, the standard deviation of x is equal to the square root of n p times failure, 1 minus p. All right, so working that out, square root of 5 times 1 sixth times 5 sixths, and then we would uh, calculate that out. And I'm not going to worry about it, um, <clears throat> whatever it is. All right, so the probability now I'm going to look at, the probability that x equals a certain value. So in our situation, we're looking for 4 to happen 2 times out of the 5. So x equals k, here's the generic formula, it's equal to n over k, <clears throat> and then uh, I'll explain that in a minute, but the probability of success raised to the k power, the probability of failure raised to the n minus k. It'll make a little bit more sense when we start plugging in some numbers. So the probability that x is going to be equal to exactly, it happens two times, we're going to do, um, it's 5, choose 2, and I say that because I'm going to go to the calculator, I'm going to do 5 ncr choose 2, and that's going to give us the number of combinations. So out of five rolls, you know, I could have gotten um, could have gotten the four that I was looking for on the first and the second roll. I could have gotten the first and the third roll, first and the fourth roll, first and the fifth, the fifth and the second, you know, or something like that. So all kinds of different combinations. Then I'm going to multiply that times success, which was 1, 6 raised to the K, which is 2, and failure, 1 minus P, 5, 6 raised to the, well, n minus k. Um, so if I got two successes, then I must have three failures in it. All right, so let's take a look at how this 
pops up in the calculator. And let's see if I have room by putting it over here. I do. Good. All right. So I'm going to go, uh, when I do the 5 choose 2, I'm going to put 5. Then I'm going to math and probability and go down to, so the math key, probability, NCR, and choose 2. And there are 10 different combinations that would match that. And I'm going to multiply that by, uh, I'm going to stick this in parentheses, 1 divided by 6, close that parentheses, raise that to the second power, and pop out of that exponent and multiply that times 5 divided by 6, raised to the third power, and that should give me my probability. So uh, there was a 16% chance, uh, 0.16. 16% chance that this was going to happen. Okay, so you could pause it there, write some stuff down, but I want to go over to this you try section and uh, give you a minute to pause this because I would like you to try this using the notes that you have and you need to rewind, you can. And then I'm going to work through them pretty fast uh, because you, you've already worked through them, so you just want to hear me tell you what they are. So here we go. All right, so 60% of the people prefer digital watches. Oops, misspelled, prefer digital watches rather than analog watches if I randomly survey 10 people find the probabilities all right so let's think about this snap does it meet the conditions success or failure you either have a digital watch or you don't randomly survey uh, 10 people um, they're all independent of each other if I'm randomly surveying them they are going to be and the probability is well 60 percent all right so the probability that uh, x equals exactly six so I'm going to do um, probability, I'm sorry, that formula n over k, so I'm looking at uh, 10 choose 6, and success is 60%, I'm looking for 6 of them, uh, failure is 40%, I'm looking for 4 of those, that's what's going to give me this answer, so I'm popping up my calculator, clear that out, one way to do this is uh, parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and stick the NCR thing so I can uh, do some quick changing of it, uh, math, probability, Go down to NCR, choose 6, close those parentheses. Okay, now I can multiply that by 0.6 raised to the 10th, um, oops, 6th power. Pop out of that parentheses. And then times failure raised to the 4th power. Pop out of there, hit enter. So point. 2508, 0.2508. Okay, what's the chance that it's going to take more than eight? Oops, wait a minute. Oh, that you're um, not more than eight. I'm sorry. If I survey uh, 10 people, what's the chance that I'm going to um, find more than eight people? Um, so wouldn't that be nine and 10? So I'm going back to this and I'm going to do second enter to pull up that previous command. Everything's the same except for it's now not 10 choose 6, I'm going to do 10 choose 10 choose 9, which means I need to have 9 successes. Whoops. Alright. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen. Alright, so <laughs> All right, I told you I'm not going to stop it. 0.6 that was the chance of success raised to the ninth power because I have to have nine successes and failure is 0.4 and then I'm going to raise that to the first power. I feel like I did something wrong in that last one, but I don't think I did. Okay, 0.04. So this is going to make my calculator go away, but 0.04, that was nine of them, but I also have to do it for 10 of them. So I'm second enter. And I'm going to go back over here. And change this to 10. And go up to here and have. Ten successes. And how many failures. zero failures, which is going to change that to a one, or I mean to a zero there, but then I hit enter, 
and 0 0.006. So I'm doing the 0 0.006 plus the 0 0.04 from the previous one. And so 0 0.006, oops, and that, so that's 0 0.046. All right, what's the chance it's going to be less than or equal to 8? Well, I just did greater than 8. That's 9 and 10. So isn't it going to be just 1 minus what I came up with right here? So 0 0.046. So the answer to this one should be, well, it's a 95.4% or 0.954%. Uh, what's the expected value? The expected value, just remember, it was n times p. Well, I'm going to have, I'm going to survey 10 people. Probability was 60%. So my expected value is I'm going to find six people with digital watches. And then the standard deviation is the square root of NP times failure. All right. So I just did uh, N times P. That was six. And N times failure is 0.4. So this is uh, 2.4 and the square root of 2.4 whatever that is. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. 1.5-ish uh, or something like that. All right, that's it. Hopefully you got the right answers.